Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. Singing what a fellowship, what a
Jesus keeps us ready for the great day. Jesus keeps us ready for the great day. Jesus keeps us ready for the great day. Thank you.
will. Because he's done it for me as he done it for you. That means he can do it for others. We should testify to the goodness of Jesus Christ. And I know that he will. Amen. God asks if there are any visitors. If you're so inclined, would you please stand with your name and church home and if there be. This is your time now. Make yourself at home. Make yourself at home. And if you want to stand and praise the Lord, you have to knock one of us out of the way here because we're going to be standing and praising him as well. Amen. If you want to pat your hand, clap your hands, stomp your feet, I'll be clapping my hands, stomping my feet already so you can join in. Amen. 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 Now we'll further give us the opportunity to praise the Lord with our giving. Everything that we receive comes from the Lord. And the Lord asks us to be good stewards of what he has given us. Now we are obligated, obligated to give for the furtherance of the gospel and the promotion of Jesus Christ. So we ask that you come forward at this time with your tithes and offerings.
They accordingly invited us to attend the prayer encounter on Sunday, March 19th at 11 a.m. The sole purpose of this atmosphere shifting event is to elevate God's people. It will be a spiritual encounter packed with prayer, power, and praise. Sins will be no more. Sickness and diseases have to go. And atmospheres will be shifted in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Join us with expectancy in your spirit to receive all that God has for you in this season. Thank you and we hope to see you there. Sister Tierra Smith Chair and Sister Regina Weatherspoon Co-Chair. Now, like I said this morning, we're leaving to go and worship this afternoon. If you would like to um, tailgate or follow someone there or you need directions, please do let Sister Carmel Jones know um, because they will be leaving the church at 1.30 this afternoon. Leaving at 1.30. Y'all heard what Uncle Sonny said, leaving at 1.30. Amen. Parents, guardians, youth, it's that time. We'll be recognizing our youth accomplishments on second Sunday in March. So please get your achievements to Sister Tonga Jones no later than Thursday, March 9th. Achievements must be from this school year, which began in August. You can give Sister Jones an actual document, um, email it, take a picture, text it, however you want to do it. But the dates must be shown along with the grades. Mark your calendars. The evangelism ministry will be hosting a community evangelistic outreach event on Saturday, March 18th, beginning at noon, and it will be held on the grounds outside. Come fellowship with us for music and a message. We have more information to come. Just to put that out there, we are accepting donations beginning this week um, to purchase food and drinks. So just mark your envelopes. The Deacon and Deaconess Ministry invites you, our members and friends, to celebrate their anniversary, which will be held during our 8 a.m. worship service on Sunday, March 19th. We look forward to seeing you. We will be celebrating homecoming on 4th Sunday, March 26th at 3 p.m. We are inviting all our former members to attend. So please come out, invite them, to worship with us in fellowship. And we're asking all members to please, please, please fill out a membership form for 2023. If you need a copy, see Sister Thompson Jones. And this ends our morning announcements. Amen. Let's govern ourselves according to the announcements. Um, also, we'll be having a Bible study on um, Tuesday this week, preceded by prayer service starting at 6 p.m. And we'll also be having our regular Thursday prayer service at noon. Amen. Um, as mentioned, uh, we will be fellowshipping with uh, St. Joseph Baptist Church in Pine Grove um, this afternoon. So if you can attend, please do so. If not, say prayers for us. We, we need prayer. Amen. Also mentioned um, the evangelism rally. It's very important that we you know, get out and do evangelism, do outreach. Uh, I was on vacation from church last week, but I was working at, you know, my nine to five job. Um, and I, I was sitting there and I was thinking, you know, things about moving forward, for like things to do next week for this upcoming year. Um, and let me give Deacon Sonny a call. And I called and I, and I mentioned that, you know, I'd like to have evangelism rally on um, preceding the homecoming. Uh, festivities and of course we were in perfect agreement he said the Holy Spirit is speaking to him as well about things we need to do with God evangelism so the Lord is working with us we have done some things we have reached last year we focused kind of internally and did some reaching out but we're going to do more reaching out this upcoming year so we need to be prayed up and on one accord so let's continue doing that. Amen. And as listed on your program, today's sermon will be rendered by Reverend Kenyatta Combs. He's associate minister at New St. John Baptist Church in Tunica, Louisiana.
pastored by Reverend Robert Benjamin Combs, Jr. Concerning Kenyatta, he was educated in East Baton Rouge Parish School System, a graduate of Bel Air High School, graduated from Southern University with a degree in history. Correct. I think a master's degree in history, too. Correct. Amen. <laughs> so it's, it's a good thing to have him present here on Black History, the last week of Black History. Amen. That, that, the name is familiar. That is my cousin. He's the son of, of my brother Leroy Combs and the late Barbara Combs. You all are very familiar with, with Uncle Leroy. That's his son. Amen. We ask that you pray for him and you receive him when it's time to do the message. Amen. Amen. Now it's time for us to have prayer. We must seek the Lord in all things. We are to look towards him for strength. We are to look towards him for encouragement. And at this time, we ask that you come forward with prayer. Some of us may be in need of financial blessing. Some of us may have in a, in a need to intercede for others in our family. Some may be having trouble on the job. You may be having trouble, some of your children, at school. But in any situation that you have, look towards the Lord. He is the author and finisher of our faith. And he is the source and power of all that we have. I need the Lord, there may be someone here, Lord, 
that are in need, Lord, of a blessing as far as health and strength. Lord, you're a doctor above all doctors, Lord. You created the entire universe, Lord. You set the stars in the place that they are, Lord. Lord, you place the ocean where it is, Lord. You have all power in your hand. So, Lord, we know that you're able to heal our bodies, Lord. Lord, we also ask, Lord, that you heal our minds, Lord. Of all the things of this earth that are not of you, Lord. Lord, and give us a heart, Lord, to seek you and to seek your holy word and to seek you in prayer. Lord, we ask, Lord, that we continue to agree in fellowship with one another. We touch and get on one accord. And Lord, we know when we're in touch and one accord with one another, there is nothing that we cannot do. Lord, we can do all things through you. Is there anything that's impossible with God? Lord, we know that that's a rhetorical answer to that. The answer is no, because you have all power. So, Lord, we look towards you, Lord, to heal our bodies, Lord. Bless the doctors and nurses that you've given to oversee our care. Lord, to help them not to rely on their own ability, but they will look towards you in the guidance of our care, Lord. And, Lord, even if we would succumb to sickness, Lord, you've already made provisions for us. Lord, at the very moment that we close our eyes, we know that we'll be received by you in paradise. And for that, we say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the victory over death. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the victory over, over disease. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the, for giving us the victory over all evil that is opposing us, Lord. Lord, we pray for our children. Lord, they leave our homes going into the school system, Lord. They have all manner of evil there, Lord. But Lord, we pray for them before they left out. Lord, and we're raising them under the fear and admonition of you. Lord, that the school, Lord, you don't need the school system permission to go in with our children. <laughs> Lord, we know that you're going in with them. How do we know? Because they come home safely each and every day, Lord. And for that, we say thank you, Lord. Lord, we pray that you touch the hearts and minds of the teachers and administration, street administrators of the school. Lord, that they would want to know that they would want to provide an education to all children, no matter the location of the school. No matter the education level of the people of the community, Lord. Because we know, Lord, that our children can do all things, Lord. Why, Lord? We know they can do all things because you created them, Lord. And everything that you created, you said was good. So, Lord, we're calling on you, Lord, to continue to lift our children up, Lord. In a world that often looks down upon them, Lord. Lord, help them to know that they have a friend in Jesus Christ and that you're a friend above all others. Lord, we ask that we be perfect examples to our children and grandchildren of how a Christian should be and how we're to behave. Lord, we pray that we continue to read your word and continue to seek you in prayer. We pray for all ministries of this church. We pray for Reverend Kenyatta Combs this morning. We pray for Reverend Smith this morning. We pray for their families as well. Lord, we pray that they continue to stay on the battlefield for the Lord, Lord. Knowing, Lord, that you are the one, Lord, that we're sure that the harvest is plentiful, Lord. All we have to do, Lord, is do the work. You'll be the one to gather the harvest, Lord. All we are are the laborers, Lord. So we ask you, Lord, to encourage us to continue laboring over the land. Lord, we know when we get to the end of our journey that you'll be with us, Lord, as you've been with us throughout this life. It is in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray this morning. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.
Oh 
worship. Anytime we're able to assemble ourselves together to be in the presence of the Lord, it is a great time. And it's over honor and privilege for me to be here this morning. Uh, that God had touched Pastor Rodney Combs hard to invite me. Thank you for that. Uh, thank you as a church and congregation for welcoming and accepting me. And I pray that this morning that whatever God has given me, that it will truly enrich you as a people, as a congregation. That it will set you free. That it will give you hope. That it will restore and revive your faith. To cause you to keep carrying on. To keep fighting. To know that it's worth fighting because we serve such an awesome God. Before I go any further, I would like to uh, recognize uh, my dad, Leroy Combs, he's back there. Yes. Uh, my Uncle Henry, Coach Combs, and also my Aunt Marilyn. Yes. God bless y'all. Thank y'all for coming. And I, I won't keep you very long. I believe in letting the Holy Spirit do what he needs to do and stay humble and let him work and get out of the way. Yes. <laughs> and I won't put a time period on it, but I won't keep you too long. <laughs> and it's, it's not a coincidence, you all, that we have been hearing so much about um, what God is doing, that the end times are accelerating. And we have all these different events around the world that are causing upheaval uh, in our society, in our communities, in our homes. And that how the people of God, his leaders are saying that surely the end times are accelerating. And we are talking about Black History Month, but it goes beyond that. If it wasn't for God, it would be no Black History Month. Right? I'm not going to preach a, a sermon to you about black history because we know that we are God's original people. We know that God put his hands on us and still have a great purpose for us. We know that, so I don't have to delve into that and we don't have to talk about that all too much. But I will say something, that even in the midst of the history where we are now, the era of time and history we are in now, God is still endeavoring for us as a people to be strong and be mighty to be lifted up in this earth realm to remind the world that they need God. That they can see God through Jesus Christ and us his people. Now, I'm going to carry on. Um, usually when I, I preach, I always ask God what he wants me to preach on. Ever since I can remember teaching Sunday school, whatever it is I was doing. But God, I got a lot of ideas. What do you want me to teach on what do you want to tell the people? I got some ideas, but God, you know best. So give me a word that can help the people, that can feed them and encourage them. I always ask him that. He said, well, we're going to go to the book of Exodus. I said, okay, uh, 14th chapter of Exodus. And he, I said, so what do you want me to talk about? He said, well, my people, I always equip you to fight, fight the faith, the, the, the battle of faith. I give you the power to go through storms. I said, well, God, what are you saying? He said that I am God, and I will bring you through the troubled waters. He said, again, I am God. Just like I delivered Moses and the children of Israel, I will bring you and my people through the troubled waters. He said, I won't bring you under or over, but I'll bring you through them. I said, so what scriptures you want me to use in Exodus 14 chapter? He said, well, let's get right to it. He said, verses 10 through 17. And when you get it, say amen. amen. And it reads as thus. And when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. So they were very afraid, and the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. Then they said to Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you so dealt with us to bring us up out of Egypt? Is this not the word that we told you in Egypt, saying, Let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. And Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. Then the Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. And the Lord said to Moses, 
why do you cry to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. But lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go out on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I indeed will harden the hearts of the Egyptians and they shall follow them. So I will gain honor over Pharaoh and over all his army, his chariots and his horsemen. You may be seated. And as I told you for a thing, there are so many. Uh, God shall bring us through the troubled waters. It is our God that fights for us. Stand still and witness the glory of God. All those can be subject matters that we can use for a title for this sermon. Or it can also be God who liberates and continues to bless his people. We can go on and on and on about it. But before I get into this message, I want to give you a little bit of the background and the history. Just a brief part of the history of what was going on. Let's remember that during this time, Israel is in what we call the Exodus. It is a transition of what God has promised them, them making the transition from slavery, learning who they are in God, and then actually going into the promised land. So we're in the part where they're actually learning to trust God. They're actually learning their identity in God. They're actually learning the miraculous power of God. And in this time, the children of Israel are being tested. God is allowing the Egyptians, the Amorites, they were surrounded by many enemies. He allowed these enemies to press in. He allowed the circumstances that Egypt, uh, that Israel faced to cause them to have faith. Either you're going to have faith or not. Even today, God is saying, either you have faith in me or you do not. If you believe my promises or you do not. Either you follow me or you're not. Because of God, and I'm going to move on anyway. So you might as well march along with me. But, 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 but during this time, you got to remember, Israel had knew about God. They had many times where they were faithful to God, but they had backslidden. They had served idol gods, and their confidence was as a, at an all-time low because they were in bondage. Everything that God had told them that they were, they no longer believed in because God had showed them all these things. They had done all these great things to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but then along the way, because of their rebellion and their disobedience, their unwillingness to keep God in, in the first place in their lives to, to trust him and to honor his word, they fell back. And because of that, they went in bondage. And in that bondage, they suffered. They were faced with the most dynamic army and nation in the world at that time. Egypt was a country and a power that had never lost a war. They lost some battles, but they had never lost a war. Every opponent, they destroyed they killed everything. They took everything. So you're talking about a people that believe that Pharaoh was God in the flesh. See, a lot of you don't know that. See, the Egyptians believe that Pharaoh was God incarnate. That he was walking among them. That he was perfect. But God said, wait a minute. I've allowed you as Egyptians to worship and do all these things against me. But now I'm about to show you how big and great I am. I'm going to show you how mighty I am. So this story and these scriptures is an illustration of how God took a leader that was reluctant to lead Moses. One that really did not talk all that well, but he had learned God and he trusted him and God put him in the forefront of his people that they could look to God that through Moses they could see God. Through Moses they could see that God was mighty and powerful and that he was going to make a way and bring them through everything that they were going through. But along the way, you know that they had took everything that Egypt had. See, a lot of people don't know, they forget. When uh, Israel left Egypt, they did not leave empty-handed. They left with Egypt's whole economy. All the silver, all the gold, they took everything. After those plagues and God showed himself mighty, Pharaoh said, you can have all of it. I just want you to get on out of Dodge. But then he thought about it. He said, wait a minute. Israel is taking my whole economy. I'm broke. He said, oh no, I got to go get my stuff. But it was God hardening his heart to do it. 
And don't you know that when God has a plan for his people, that he have a plan to elevate us, that he have a plan to bless us, he allows the enemies that face us hearts to be hardened. It's not that they automatically just hate you just to hate you. God allows it to happen. Because if you have no opposition, how are you going to know how strong God is? How are you going to know how faithful he is? How are you going to know how to defend and trust on God? How are you going to know how faithful he is? How are you going to know how good he is unless you have enemies? And don't you know that when God has a big setup for his people, his church, for families, for individuals, he allows circumstances to be almost unbearable. He allows the obstacles to be that much bigger. Because if we can handle it, we don't need God. If we can do it on our own, we don't need God. We don't even need faith. We can just get it done ourselves. So God said, you know what, Moses? You're going the easy way, but hey, turn around right quick. Moses said, what? He said, it's clear this way. He said, no, turn around. I want you to go all the way back through the wilderness and in between the Red Sea. He said, what? He said, yeah, do what I'm telling you because I got something planned for y'all. And I just need to teach Satan and Pharaoh a valuable lesson. But along the way, you being uncomfortable, I'm going to show you how mighty I am. In the midst of your difficulties and your troubles, I'm going to keep you and bless you and fight for you. But I just need you and my people to be obedient right now. I know you all understand that I'm telling you the easy way back through the wilderness. I'm taking you back through wild animals. I'm taking you back to face the giants. I'm taking you back to the Red Sea. But I'm doing it for a purpose. And sometimes in our lives, when God tells us to go one way, and he'll change the plan. He'll change the, the, the course of how you're walking because he wants us to learn some things before he advances us. He wants us to be reminded that we're nothing without him. He wants us to, well, to be reminded that if we don't humble ourselves, he can't be exalted. If he's strong, then he can't be your strength. If you know everything, God can be your wisdom. So he said, go on back and come back to the wilderness, and then I'm going to have you where you look like you true. I'm going to put you in between the wilderness and the Red Sea. Oh, boy, can you imagine what Moses went through with the children of Israel? And as we read, we're going to go through it briefly. You, what are you doing? You, you're not a true prophet. But why would you take us where we almost there and now we like trapped in a hard place? And then we got enemies, we can't whoop these people. Then they got animals, we can't kill all these animals. Then we got a sea that we'll never be able to cross. And God said, no, 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 no. What you think I can't do, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna put you in a place where you're uncomfortable. I'm gonna trouble. I'm going to put you in a place where you're confused and almost lose your mind that I can show you that I'm God. That I can show off with all of my beauty and majesty. Well, I can show you how strong my hand really is. But all I want you to do is trust me and believe in me. Have faith in me and let me run the show. And that's what God is saying to us today. You may have all the education and that's good. You may have figured out a lot of things, but I'm still God. And I can still put you in a position where you don't know what to do and how to do it. But if you humble yourself, I'll bring you through it. Let the church say amen. And then as we as we go along, see you gotta understand that God is a God that is methodical. He's a God that plans everything strategically. He is a God that knows how to build his people up. Because remember, Israel had an orphan mentality. They had a slave mentality. Oh, they, they had all the silver and gold that they could handle, but they had the mindset of an orphan. And God said, ain't no way my people gonna have an orphan mentality. I got to make sure all that die out before I bring you into the promised land. I ain't going to bring you to the promised land if you embarrass me. Well, I can't show how mine I am. Well, you can't stand up and take what I gave you and maintain it. I can't have no orphans in my kingdom. I'm a God that's wealthy and rich. I'm a God that's powerful and great. And I can't have my children thinking like they are slaves. So I'm going to have to take you through troubles, trials and tribulations. I'm going to have to
to put enemies in front of you to show you that you are my people and that I'm your God. Just like today, God will put his enemies in front of us. God will let us get tossed around and thrown everywhere to show us that we are his children. That you ain't no slaves. That you are raw priesthood. A peculiar people. Sanctified and dedicated to God. My God that lives in us, we run the show for God. See, we got to learn in this earth realm. See, the world going to be who they are, but we got to be strong and bold. But God said that the righteous are as bold as a lion. When have you ever seen a lion back away from a confrontation? When have you ever seen a lion tuck his tail between his legs? When have you ever seen a lion run from trouble? He walks with his head up. And he's not even bothered by his competition. And if we go back, I looked at a video. This doctor, I work at Baton Rouge Children. He said, Ken, I'm, you know, I'm from us. Hey, come here, man. I want to show you something. He said, we talk about lions and stuff. He like animals. I said, okay. He said, I got a video for you. I said, okay, doc. Uh, I said, what is it? He said, it's a man uh, walking by a pride of lions. I said, okay. He showed me. Do you not know that the, the hand lion, he was so bold and confident, he could have killed a man. He looked at him and he never stopped walking. Again, he walked by the man and he never stopped walking. But he let him know, I see you, but I ain't worried about you. I'm on a mission. Same thing with us. Yeah, we got to deal with everyday life and we got to go through things and we got to go through the battles and all that. But we should not in no time let the enemy see us sweat. And no time should we let the world see us sweat. And no time should the world see us panicking. Talking about what I'm going to do when God has shown himself over and over to be mighty for us. A God that has provided for us over and over. A God that has lifted us up over and over. Why would we go around acting like we confused? Like we weaklings? Like we chumps? Why are we going to our school and everywhere we go and just let people talk about our God? We're supposed to be putting them in check. And then as, as we go along, the further that the children of Israel and Moses went into the wilderness, the more and more trouble the children of Israel became. Right? Because it seemed like, God, you promised us all this. We got the silver and gold promised land, but it looked like we just going deeper and deeper into nowhere. Mm. So I don't understand, Moses, what you doing? I thought you was talking to God. I thought you heard from God. Man, you don't know God. And then God said, you know what? He told Moses. He said to, to he told, uh, he told uh, Moses to tell the children of Israel to stand still and behold my glory. Huh? And a lot of times when we're in the midst of our troubles and our battles and we are uncomfortable, we squirm and we squinch, we try to figure it out ourselves. But God said, not so fast. Stay still and let me fight for you. You might have an idea of how you want to do it, but I don't want to do it that way. You're going to do it my way. I'm the general. I'm the eternal father of life. Stay still and let me show off for you. If you humble yourself long enough, if you just suffer for a little while, I'll raise you up. And the same thing he did for Moses and the children of Israel, he's still doing it today. God still going to do it today if we will let him. It's not the word that has been thought of us to serve the Egyptians then that we should die in the wilderness. No hope. Thank God that God sends anointed people down through the time of history. He sends leaders to encourage his people when they have every reason to quit and give up. Just like Moses, I'm quite sure that we put ourselves in his mind what he was facing. You're talking about a people that don't understand that God has a plan for them. That God is getting ready to deliver them. But yet and still, they have no faith. They're looking back into slavery as if slavery was some kind of blessed thing. 
They were looking back in Egypt as if eating onions and leeks and watermelons was the best that God had to offer. But he was saying to them, in the midst of your troubles, and you being perplexed, and you feeling like you want to give up, you can't give up right now. You can't give up right now. You can't give up right now. Because the wilderness is designed, and troubled waters are designed to challenge your faith. Amen. Troubled waters and storms are designed to see what you really made of. Yeah. Yeah.